On the Iranian issue, now that we are talking, I think it is very uh, almost a crisis. We hear the, that within the Israeli cabinet there are some ministers who uh, are eager to get to a attack uh, targets in Iran. I suppose they would focus at any rate upon nuclear targets. And I hope they would not focus upon the Bushra power reactors, because if they uh, attacked power reactors, that would be terrible, terrible precedent. And there's also a rule against uh, attacking any installations containing dangerous forces in the additional protocol to the Geneva Convention. So I hope they'll stay away from that. But there is, in Israel, talk repeatedly about attacks. And also in the United States, you have Republican candidates uh, for president who uh, do not seem at all to hesitate about the the, how good it would be, or necessary it would be, to attack the Iran before, as they say, they have actually come to a weapon. Well, this is discussion about preventive war. And I thought preventive war was generally frowned upon. Uh, it is true that the Iranian president had talked about Israel being wiped out from the map of the world, and that's unacceptable language, language that should be rejected, yes. But the, the dissident, it is not an attack. The ones who talk about attack are the Israeli side. And if they were to do so, I think the consequences could be horrible. We cannot expect that the Iran would not counter, go, go against. And you could have a big conflagration in the Gulf and all over the Middle East. Uh, moreover, there would be no certainty that attacks would be able to wipe out the places, the nuclear places where they are preparing, uh, hiding for enrichment of uranium. So. Uh, the effect would probably be to, uh, to create a strong nationalism in Iran and get people to unite behind a government that is not so universally liked in Iran otherwise. So I think the negative consequences should be, uh, should be considered. Uh, we should not simply say that, di that diplomacy has failed. So what remains? Only military attacks. Well, is military attack a solution? I don't think so. What can one do then? Well, I think the... Uh, the European countries, the UK and France and Germany, have started negotiations, talked with the Iranians, and that has expanded so since then. So now we talk about the five plus one, let's say the P5, uh, that means US and, and Russia and, and China as well, plus Germany, that they are in, in talks with Iran. And these talks have not been successful, but the idea has been that the demand of Iran that they should suspend enrichment of uranium and in return they would be given various benefits. The Iranians say that is our right under the MPT to enrich uranium, that is true if it is for peaceful purposes. So they would sacrifice something if they go away from, from enrichment. And they have been offered various sensible things like support for Iran to get into the World Trade Organization, which is worth something, easier financial relations and investment, which is worth something, support for the expansion of the Iranian civilian nuclear power program to generate electricity, which is sensible. But there could also be more, and we don't hear so much about that. One could, for instance, offer the Iran guarantees against any military attacks from the outside. This has been done vis-a-vis -vis North Korea, has not been done to my knowledge about Iran. One could also uh, give them guarantee against subversion instigated from abroad. And as we know, there is, is support from the outside for, for subversion in Iran, not a vast amount, but some. And the other day there was a, a drone that fell down <laughs> in Iran, so there is some of that going on. There could also be an offer of American diplomatic relations with Iran. They haven't had that since 1979. Now the British have withdrawn their people from the embassy, so maybe that could also be a, a sort of incentive on the table. So there are more things that could be done. One could show more imagination, I think, but I was talking from the outside, I think, in discussions with them. Another feature I've never heard about is a, a giving green light to a pipeline for gas through Iran and to India. Both Indians and the Iranians want it, but it has been stopped uh, by diplomatic means from other side. Well, that would be another thing that would be an incentive for them to go along. Now, I wonder if one can be sure that such incentives added on the table that it will lead somewhere. But another operation that is, is on is a conference about a zone free of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction. The NPT review conference decided on that in 2010, and we now know that the, it will take place in Helsinki, and it should be before the end of 2012. 
Now, originally, the idea of a zone against nuclear weapons, in other words, mass destruction, was had its edge against, uh, 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 of course, against uh, Israel, because they were the ones who had them. But today, uh, the Iranian movement towards enrichment and a possible uh, nuclear weapon is, of course, another overwhelming issue. And I think that if they were to discuss a zone, then one should ask oneself, what is it we want to do away with here? Is it only the weapons that are ready, that lie there? Or is it also stocks of uranium, rich uranium or plutonium? Is it also the means of producing the rich uranium? Now, then you are in a zone free both of weapons and fuel cycle activities. And I think that would have great benefits for Israel and for Iran. Iran does not need enrichment. They could get assurances of supply of fuel for the, for the reactors that they have. And they do, so they don't need it. There's no economy in it. They have two reactors. Korea has 20 reactors, and they do not enrich themselves. They buy in the international market. For Israel, it would mean doing away with the nuclear weapons they have. And they would certainly laugh at me if I said, suggested that to them today and say that's our life insurance. But many people say that nuclear weapons are really a very doubtful utility. And you are not exactly naked military, even if you were to do away with them. See, what you, it would be a sacrifice, yes. But what you would gain would be that the Iranian threat risk of enrichment, enrichment of uranium would be gone. And in addition to that, you would also be assured by other countries in the Middle East that Saudi Arabia, Egypt and others would commit themselves to non-proliferation. And there would be a very strengthened means of verification. So Israel, I think, would also stand to gain. But as I said today, I think they would laugh at me. But the more they worry about further countries in the Middle East moving towards nuclear weapon, I think the, the more worthwhile the sacrifice of their own weapons would be and it would be also a step for the world to get into towards a a world freer of nuclear weapons than we are now